Hello. Yeah. So good evening. Good evening. Uh, I, on behalf of Beyond Law CLC, as well as ULS Punjab University Chandigarh, welcome you all to a yet another session which will engage us in a different way. We have a topic which invariably lawyers are not keenly taking up. They find, uh, just hold on. Is everybody able to hear it? Uh, kindly post it on the chat box because I've just received from Mr. Sanjay Nahar that he's not able to speak. And if Mr. Badrinath, could you just try the, uh, uh, disallow the annotation because otherwise some people have started scribbling it out. Disallow the annotation. Just try the stoppage of annotation. Oh. We are not. Yes, sir. Uh, we can start everybody saying uh, we are able to hear. Uh, on behalf of Beyond Law CLC and Punjab University Chandigarh, we welcome you all to yet another engaging session wherein we have taken the topic of GST, a product of collaborative federalism under Indian constitution, and a topic which looks very complex, but we have a person who is known for making complex issues simple, and he's from the firm Lakshmi Kumaran and Sridharan attorneys, who have created a niche wherever the issues of complexity not only of direct and indirect tax comes but large issues which are a wide spectrum their firm is contacted and under the ages of mr v lakshmi kumar they have been able to lay down the benchmarks which other people need to copy so that they can also reach those benchmarks be that as it may in the competitive world it is always that once you are on the it's it is said that it's not difficult to come on the top but it is difficult to sustain on the top but mr v lakshmi kumaran has been able to sustain create a different benchmarks once if one googles on the google one finds that they have more than 400 associates and more than 12 offices that itself is not a mean achievement because we find that even to sustain one office with 10 12 people it becomes very difficult uh, the topic in, once it came it uh, it was there were large number of jokes spread on gst itself because people were finding that gst is not able, easy to understand but and invariably chartered accountants taking up these issues but mr this firm has shown us a, a new horizon that the lawyers can also do a complex issue Amongst us, we have Professor Ratan Singh, who is the director of ULS, Punjab University, Chandigarh, with whom we have the partnership where the intent is to disseminate knowledge through the speakers who are legally known for their equipments as well as the ethics and principles. Uh, I would ask Professor Ratan Singh to formally welcome Mr. V. Lakshmi Kumaran. Uh, so it's a proud moment for Beyond Law CLC as well as ULS Punjab University Chandigarh to have you on the board. Over to Professor Ratan Singh. I'm just unmuting Mr. Uh, Professor Ratan Singh. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, Vikasi. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Vikasi, once uh, we are talking about the federalism, and uh, over this, we have a long provisions as far as the constitution is concerned, which are dealing with the central state relations. Uh, even though for this uh, a dispute right from the commencement of the constitution till today is going on. Sometimes it was some financial matter, sometimes it was administrative relations or it may be a legislative relation between center and state. We have constituted uh, Sarkaria commissions uh, and the Sarkaria, Sarkaria commission has given detailed recommendations. And after the Sarkaria commission again the constitution review committee was constituted. Uh, for giving uh, recommendations to see about the uh, central state relations. But the topic which we have chosen uh, for today about goods and services tax, a product of collaborative federalism under the Indian constitution. 
because reason being in these days uh, the issue between central and state is coming up at with reference to uh, gst because reason being gst is determining about the two characters whether this is a unitary state or say uh, federal state so i hope uh, with the deliberations of mr uh, lakshmi kumaran uh, there will be lot of doubts among the academicians among the professionals and i'm very sure his deliberations will definitely enrich us and this will be uh, the feast for the day for all of us so i welcome you on this platform mr lakshmi kumaran and uh, back to vikasi so before i ask uh, mr v lakshmi kumaran to formally uh, take over the entire issues and to elucidate in his own style and to explain we will be having question and answer session after the uh, entire uh, bird eye view of this gst a product of collaborative federalism under indian constitution but we will just like to clarify that since the topic is a very limited issue on a gst a product of collaborative federalism under indian constitution we will be only taking those questions all within the gamut of this issue because the subject is vast and let's not uh, uh, elaborate it more and we will not be able to handle everything so let's we are all uh, participants having good knowledge we should restrict ourselves to this over to you uh, sir thank you thank you professor ratan singh and also to all of you <clears throat> a good evening normally a saturday evening is a time where you spend time with your family and in these uh, covid 19 days we are spending time on learning something new new subjects when vikas spoke to me whether uh, i could share my thoughts i was too happy to do so and uh, i have taken a topic which is uh, very interesting and uh, i would say <clears throat> uh, i won't say controversial but it is necessary what i intend to do today is we will first of all give a very short glimpse of the salient features of the gst we would then deal with the famous constitution amendment of 101st constitution amendment and then i am going to describe how the collaborative federalism is working under the indian constitution and how the gst is born is born and flourishing that's what i want to talk today is when you talk about the salient features of gst what comes to your mind we had in the past several types of taxes excise duties service tax central sales tax etc each of those act taxes are all event based the event of manufacture attracted excise duty the event of rendering services attracted service tax the event of sales attracted sales tax event of imports attracted custom duties so what is the taxable event as for the gst is concerned it is the supply of goods or services or both and this concept of supply is not necessarily related to sales it's much beyond and we can write treatise on the term supply and any book will be incomplete on dealing with subject of supply alone now this is not the lecture for dealing with the word supply i restrict my curiosity to talk more about the supply today however as for india is concerned it was having different varieties and types of taxes i was just mentioning excise duty service tax central sales tax compulsory duties special additional duty state value tax value tax entertainment tax etc 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 all these taxes are getting subsumed 
in one tax called goods and services tax we must remember custom duty has not been subsumed in the gst the import and export of goods will continue to be governed under the custom law and the custom tariff the import policy export policy will continue to operate whether gst or no gst custom duty will be charged on the import and export of goods the most important feature of the gst is the grant of seamless credit what i mean by seamless credit is for those who have been practicing this tax of value added tax they will remember that if vat or then called sales tax if it was paid in maharashtra and the goods are sold from maharashtra to say karnataka and in karnataka if the goods are resold there is no credit of the taxes paid in maharashtra it was not available therefore it becomes a cost so every time when the goods move from one state to another the taxes paid in the other state was never given as a credit while paying taxes in the second state and if unfortunately if those goods are again sold to another another state you had another component of the interstate sales tax without any credit whatsoever but that has been given up given up under the gst today whatever taxes are paid at the gst in maharashtra is available as a credit while paying taxes in karnataka honestly speaking as a lawyer practicing taxes for more than 30 years or 35 years now i never imagined that this could happen in india considering the way in which the states were following their taxation policies karnataka i used to think why should i give a credit of taxes paid in maharashtra while i am allowing you to sell the goods within the my state this was the position and we took it for granted and i would say that this gst this one benefit which has been given to the entire industry that the taxes paid in one state will be given as a credit in another state is a singular achievement as far as this particular feature of gst is concerned we are at this point of time remembering what exactly happening in the european union where number of countries have joined together by treaty of rome and they come back to their come together and come to an agreement that taxes paid in one state one one country is available as a credit in another country as far as india is concerned we are blessed our states are bound not by treaty by by the indian constitution that constitution binds all of us and that constitution is giving us the birth of gst which is a celebrated major tax reform ever done in india in the indira taxes field and this gst also brought about a very paradigm shift in the way of thinking of the indira taxes earlier sales tax etc were origin based tax today the gst is destination based tax so therefore the destination country or the ultimate state where the goods are ultimately destined they would get the credit and they will make the further payment of taxes this is a singular achievement as far as the uh, the destination based tax now as far as the gst is concerned ideally center could collect this tax as a gst and distribute the same to the states in which case there will be no difficulty whatsoever however the states did not probably agree because they don't want to lose the taxing power nor would they want to be at the mercy of the center for getting the distribution of the taxes so therefore what happened is 
these taxes which are be which could have been collected by a one agency at the center of the state was not permitted and therefore they brought in a concept called central gst and the state gst apart from union territory gst whenever the goods are sold or supplied within a particular state those goods will attract both cgst and sgst that is central state tax central gst and state gst however if the goods are sold interstate say from maharashtra to karnataka in our example then the tax will be igst they are called integrated gst and this will be paid in maharashtra however when the goods are resold in karnataka this igst will be given as a credit and therefore it does not become a cost to the seller who is reselling the goods in karnataka this is the salient feature of the, as far as the the gst law is concerned of course we have different rates zero rated 5% 12% 18% 28% plus 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 and these rates depend on the classification of the goods and uh, to appropriately classify the goods in different different headings attracting different rates of taxes is a mammoth task unless you are very good in technology understanding the technology and the principles of interpretation you can commit mistakes that way the, the law is not that simple while doing so alcohol for human consumption may be kept out of gst for the present some petroleum products like crude diesel petrol natural gas etc are kept out of the gst for the present but on the recommendation of gst council it can be introduced later all these changes these legislations have been made consequent to the amendment made to the constitution which is heard in first amendment to the constitution we are now going to discuss the constitution amendment itself i want you to know today i am not giving a talk on gst that is a vast subject interesting subject complicated subject but i must say before i get into the constitution issues i must say the demand for providing quality service and advice and also litigation in the gst is mammoth immeasurable the number of clients is more than a million and i don't see many lawyers providing this service to the clients for some or other the lawyers have not spent time in understanding this particular law i would earnestly request the lawyers in this audience take up this particular thing seriously and <clears throat> they can render human service to the clients now coming to the amendment first constitution amendment i want to give a background if we want to achieve one nation one tax as the honorable prime minister said what is that we need to do? first of all we must freeze the rate of tax to be levied by different states the procedure for collection should be uniform and the taxes paid in one state should be available as a credit in another state i think these are the fundamental things if it is not done if each state can tax commodities and services differently and the credit flow is not seamless and the procedure to be followed for paying the taxes are going to be different then chaos total chaos so therefore if you want to achieve one nation one tax there has to be an understanding and indeed agreement among all the states and the center that we shall follow a uniform law whether it is by one state another state we will have the same type of procedure being followed we shall not charge different taxes rates for different goods and different services from different states we shall follow uniformity so these are the things which are necessary for the implementation of the gst 
and this is the vision of the government where they try to bring this particular vision into force now i want before i talk about article 246a of the constitution which is a new article introduced for the introduction of the gst in india i want to give a certain background as far as the indian constitution is concerned the powers of legislation by the center and the states have been divided into three lists union list state list and the concurrent list union list gives the power exclusive power to the union to legislate there are about 97 items in it as for the state list is concerned it is giving the power to the state governments to levy or legislate on those subjects then there is also a concurrent list where the center and the state could exercise their legislative power to those subject matters and if there is an incongruity between the or conflict between the uh, legislation by the center vis-a-vis -vis the state then the central legislature will prevail the dichotomy is settled like this so now and secondly any item which is not covered under list 2 or list 3 that is state list or the concurrent list will automatically go to central list under 1897 so therefore if you look at the federal structure of our india it looks though it is federal but is tilted toward the center in fact there are judgments also to say that to that effect now whenever you are going to talk about the gst where the power of legislation levy and collection of the gst is going to be done both by the center and the state easily it could have been put in the concurrent list and from the concurrent list they could have drawn the powers to the state and the center however the state government probably did not agree because the past experience that the center may not give them the fair share in fact this could be one of the reason why there was a long delay in the commencement and legislation of the gst and ultimately the center has to sit down and then talk to the center states already let us now have one article other than the union list state list and concurrent list where the constitution will give the power both to the parliament as all state legislature to make laws with regard to the goods and services imposed by the union of the state this is the article article called 246a and this article specifically says not to standing anything can in article 246 and 254 parliament and of course subject is clause 2 the legislature of every state have the power to make laws with regard to gst so the first time in india in the constitution you have introduced a particular article whereby the power to levy the tax is given to both parliament as also the state legislature this is a unique unique amendment to the constitution giving this particular power to the state legislature as also the parliament therefore this is not a levy where you can trace it to concurrent list it is a levy under article 246a while doing so they also said that uh, the constitution also says as far well as the imposition of taxes on the interstate goods uh, supply of goods and services it shall not be with the state governments it can be only with the center similarly with regard to the importation of the goods wherever gst has to be levied as the counter ruling duty it will again be by the center and not by the states and it is for good reason even in the respect of vat regime or sales tax regime interstate sales what will constitute interstate sale what could be the rate of tax is paid etc was always by the central sales tax act and not by the state legislatures and this has to be maintained here otherwise there can be utter chaos so therefore advisedly as far as the the power to levy tax of the interstate supply as also the cross border supply has been kept only with the parliament and nobody else 
again always article 271 gave the power to the center to levy surcharges and this power has been curtailed in respect of the goods and services covered by the gst the center will not have the power to levy surcharges and this is necessary because if the power is given to the center to levy surcharges it can increase the quantum of the gst for the central portion depriving the state governments therefore this again brought in what is known as level playing field between the center and the state and of course we need to amend article 366 by introducing new articles of articles 12a 12 and 26a defining what is goods and services tax what is the event of uh, levy of tax and what should be the definition of the goods and what should be the definition of services these things are to be put in in the constitution itself a suitable amendment has been made already now i am going to take up very the collaboration in this federal assembly as i mentioned earlier in order to have a successful and seamless levy of gst across india and if we have to achieve one nation one tax regime the most important thing is the rates of taxes should be the same method of collection more or less the same and there should be free flow of credit if we have to achieve that if there is no mechanism to achieve this there will be again chaos so therefore what it was thought was let us constitute a council called the gst council article 279a provides for the constitution of the gst council it is a constitutional appointment this constitute this council will consist of the union finance minister as chairman chairperson union minister of state in charge of revenue and finance as a member and minister in charge of finance and taxation other other minister by nominate by the any state government so therefore the gst council is basically represented by the center by the finance minister and minister of state whereas all the state governments are represented by their the finance minister or other tax ministers etc as the case may be therefore the first of all the council has been made under article 279a and then what happened now the first the one of the important article of the gst function of the gst council is this all decisions of the gst council shall be taken at a meeting by a majority of not less than 3/4 of the weighted votes of the members present and voting this is a very important step taken that means if any decision is take to be taken on altering the rates of gst it is cgst or sgst you need to have a minimum 3/4 weighted average I mean, weighted votes as a majority decision if it is not there you are not going to get the proposal approved that is fine but then the vote of the central government shall have the weighted average weighted weightage of one third of the total votes the votes of all state government taken together shall have weightage of two thirds uh, here is the balance so the center has one third votes all state government put together have got two third votes but for any decision to be taken you need to have three fourth majority so therefore all the state put together if they decide to do something without the concurrence of the state government central government they cannot do so the central government alone wants to do something they cannot do so so therefore they have to necessarily sit together talk to each other persuade each other come up with a proposal which are universally acceptable and then apply go go to the voting and unless these votes unless the particular proposal is cleared by majority of at least 3/4 of the total weighted votes you cannot get the proposal through this according to me is a crucial aspect 
in the so-called collaborative federalism. We have seen in the past, as I mentioned, even the judgments of the courts, Supreme Court also said that the federalism is tilting toward the center. Here it is in balance. Now, center cannot do on its own unilaterally. State government cannot do the unilaterally. They have to sit together and then ultimately come with a majority decision of more than three-fourth decision, 75% majority, then only proposals can be cleared. Now what happens? What are the functions of the GST functions? First of all, the GST council will make a recommendation, which are all the taxes to be subsumed, which they did. They have said the following taxes are to be subsumed, the following tax to be subsumed later. Goods and services which are subjected to the GST, that also they will indicate very clearly. And most important thing is, they said, we will create model GST laws indicating principles of levy, apportionments of GST, IGST, the place of supply, time of supply, valuation, etc., etc. All those things will be made as model GST laws. And it is expected that all these state governments will follow the model GST law whereby we can bring in uniformity in the application of the GST. Similarly, what should be the threshold exemption for turnover for the GST? Because you remember, in excise, we had a 1.5 crore turnover is exempt. State governments had different, different thresholds. So therefore, what should be the minimum threshold above which the taxes can be levied so that small traders are not put into the GST net. That also they will decide. Another thing, imp important decision they can take and they have taken is what should be the rate of tax to be levied on the goods or services. And this is a very important aspect of the GST Council's functions. This rate fixation, whether it is zero rate, 5%, 12%, 18, 28, or beyond, have to be approved by the GST Council. If the center wants to change, they cannot change unless GST Council recommends. Any legislation by the center or the state governments without the recommendation of GST Council cannot be passed. It is illegal. It is unavoidable. However, the GST Council recommendations are not mandatory. The government may accept, accept, may not accept. In other words, no legislation can be passed by the center of the state without the GST Council's recommendation in the matters related to the GST. And if they do so, the law, the legislature can be challenged. The virus can be questioned. However, it's still a recommendation. It is not binding, obviously, because the binding nature with the parliament ultimately the state legislation. So therefore, the respect is given to the supremacy of the parliament, and therefore they still stand on the recommendation. However, without the recommendation, legislations are banned. And special provision for northeastern states has to be given. And uh, if there is any calamity, emergency, if there is any particular state has to raise revenues, etc., then the GST Council will recommend for the particular state for a particular period, you can leave additional taxes so that you can meet those contingencies. And residuary items, namely, what are the items by which GST Council can decide on their own? Now, how the GST Council was functioning all along, it is remarkable. 39 GST Council meetings have taken place till now. And all the decisions have been taken on unanimous decisions. There was no need for any voting. That means the center and the states, irrespective of the political parties sitting in each state, irrespective of the differences between the political leaders as far as the political philosophy, etc., when it comes to the question of implementing the GST, they have all decided in a unanimous manner. 
and they brought in a uniform GST law. And some of the major decisions taken by the council is again with regard to the policy framework. They brought in model tax laws. They brought in various rates, the exemptions. And the more important thing is proactively they introduce or release those model legislations well in advance so that the state governments can adopt and legislate all those things in their respective states. The most important thing is what are the important set of rules which have been released in September 2016, whereby it was finally finalized in May 2017 after getting various comments from the public. The rates have been fixed 5%, 12%, 18%, 28%, etc. by fixing the taking into account the historical rates for which these goods have been taxed earlier, cumulatively, and then fixing the rate called the floor rate here. This is the rate applicable for these goods for the future, and these have been done. Apart from all, they also took into account after fixing the rate, either the public are affected in a different manner, and if the goods are not to be subjected to a higher rate of 28% tax, the public grievances are looked into, and in November 2017 they reverted more than 80% of the goods in the 28% category to 18% category. That means they are allied to the problem. It is not as though they have rigid about a particular decision is taken, we stick by that. No, it is not the way in which GST Council functions. Example is regarding the Kerala flux. At the 32nd GST Council meeting, when the Kerala government said that they had a devastation of floods, etc., etc., they wanted to collect extra amounts and they did. The GST Council allowed them to introduce this, what is known as the Kerala flood cess. This is another example whereby the GST Council allowed the state government to levy these types of taxes. Now, I wanted to step back here and then revisit some of the issues. As far as the GST Council, as I said, is a pivot of the entire system of the collaborative federalism. The state governments and the central government have to sit down together and then discuss what is the best interest for the center and the state and then come up with the legislations which are acceptable to the both center and the states. If, if today, if a question is asked, how do you manage to have the same uniform rates throughout the country for the GST rates for the center and the states? The answer is because the functioning of the GST council. This is one step which has been taken as an important step while amending the Indian constitution that how the state and the center should sit together and then finalize the legislation as for the GST is concerned. Now, I was asked in the Chatra that I would like to talk a little less and then ask more questions from the audience. I deliberately stopped here at this point of time. We can talk for hours and hours on the aspect of GST itself. But as I said, we will talk about the uh, collaborative federalism under Indian constitution and how the GST is born out of this particular lofty thinking. That is what I wanted to say. Therefore, I stop here for a moment and then I'll invite questions. And uh, I would request uh, the audience to focus the questions relating to the constitutional issues and uh, the, the applicable, uh, the law applicable to GST rather than the GST per se, because that is a vast subject and uh, that would require a different type of uh, examination, et cetera, et cetera. With this caveat, I now hand over the mic to the uh, Vikas and others. Uh, uh, thank you, the insights given by you uh, were quite lucid. You have just posted on the chat box. One is asking, Piyush, 
3629 uh, a has not been deleted post introduction of gst how do you see the conflict between this and the schedule 2 of C cgst uh, uh, that particular article ought not to be deleted not it should not be deleted uh, the reason is very simple the ex excise duty has not been completely abolished the interested movements with regard to the alcohol etc will continue to be there and therefore article 366 29a must continue to be remaining there it is not to be deleted because of the see you must also realize that the definition under article 266 is sale whereas gst law talks about supply and therefore with regard to those transactions of sale that are going to talk to this must continue to be enforced there the the question will be only taken on uh, on of those persons who, who uh, have reflected their name in the chat box because certain people have have entered with the name of the mobile the, those questions will not be taken uh harni sridhan why does article 269a use the term in the course of import and not import <laughs> Ah, now there can be situations where the goods while during exports can be resold by transfer of documents. The reason why it in the course, the same words have been used in the earlier also with regard to the central sales tax levy and the sets where they have said very clearly in the course of imports, in the course of export. And this allows not only the actual import, also allows the transfer title of the document. The ultimate buyer of the document will become the importer. And therefore, this is a facility equivalent like this. Uh, Ayush, what is the taxability of sales in the course of import under GST? As far as the imports is taking place, apart from the levy of custom duties, if the goods are covered under the GST law, then the countervailing duty equivalent to interstate GST will be charged. That is the levy will be charged as a countervailing duty at the time of importation, apart from the custom duty being charged on the goods that is imported. Earlier, the countervailing duty was equal to excise duty payable on the like goods produced in India and some to the, some extent the sales tax levied under the various states now since excise duties and sales tax are not liable in respect of the goods covered by gst now what will be charged will be that charge the basic custom duty all other auxiliary duty etc etc plus now add igst which is equivalent to the gst payable central plus state you can put together what is the component that will be levied as the IGST at the, at the name of importation? So, uh, one question is uh, one person is uh, time and again posting the chat, uh, question on the chat. Though I am reading it, his question, but time and again I am saying if you want to ask your question by getting yourself unmuted or otherwise, you should uh, join with your name itself. It is double A, uh, uh, Pentite, division of tax between center and GST and the jurisdiction to recover how do you maintain the balance the when i mentioned about the levy of 5% 12% 18% 28% 28%, it is a consolidated amount of tax effectively each of them has to be divided 50 50 in fact whenever we say 5% gst it means 2.5% central gst 2.5% state GST. Similarly, when it is 18%, it is 9% central GST and 9% state GST. So we think of a devolution. Now, as far as the 
interstate supply or importation what is levied is igst the igst is the sum total of the central gst and state gst this igst which is collected has to be distributed between the center and the state in the same ratio of 50 50 when it comes to question of state gst whatever the state government collect as state gst will be accruing to them only no part will come to the center whereas whatever is collected as central gst a portion of it is given to the state government only a portion retained by the state the central government so therefore as far as the customer is con the, the the consumer is concerned or the trader is concerned he is not concerned whether this amount is being retained by the state government or not all he has to do is i am supplying the goods i am required to pay this amount amount of central gst this amount of state gst and pay it the buyer will buy this he will take the amount of the credit and whatever is he selling so therefore as far as the customers and traders are concerned it makes no difference to them as far as the government is concerned if there is a transaction is in the nature of interstate trade supply then state a in our example maharashtra will collect what is known as igst once igst is collected it goes to the karnataka then the state of karnataka is obliged to give the credit of igst while charging the local central gst and state gst so therefore this become credit neutral at the back end the center and the state will settle their amount as far as how to how to apportion this amount how the credit being uh, 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 how the uh, credit has to be apportioned and taken back however as far as the uh, traders are concerned they are not worried about how the back end calculation takes place uh sir yush article 269 of the constitution of india does not allow levy of taxes on exports however gst allows exports with payment of taxes and then claim refund is this constitutionally valid see uh first of all whenever goods are exported the principle is the taxes paid within the country are also not exported only the goods are exported because if the taxes are also becoming component of the price charged by the exporter in the international market he become uncompetitive so therefore it is said that the finished goods when we exported must be stripped off all the taxes paid on the inputs and input services this can be achieved by two ways one allowing the goods to export under bond or under the lut or pay the taxes and claim their refund so long as ultimate result is the same that the finished goods are exported where the gst on the inputs and input services are all be taken given back as far as that is concerned whether first tax is paid and cleared or it is exempted or taxes are not clear not collected at all it makes no difference i don't think we can say it unconstitutional Uh, uh, Yush, Article Two Eighty Six has deleted the levy of lower rate of tax on declared goods such as steel, iron, etc. Can state now increase the rate of duty on such items? No, uh, that that class that section because these goods are now covered by the GST now. So the question of state government ever levying or say, central government levying as the goods of special importance, etc., or this thing will not arise. We are all fully covered by the GST now. Therefore, central state side will not apply any more for those goods, etc. Then you don't have to worry about. Uh, what do you eventually feel, Madan, uh, Madan? Whether GST is a boon or a bane, whether it has resolved the things or not. Uh, I would say it is a boon. It is the greatest boon ever given to the Indian public today. The reason is this. one tax reform is going to give the credit across and thereby it will reduce the cost of the transactions if you can also take into account logistic costs and you can plan your manufacturing activities supply chain distribution chain properly you can save tremendous amount for the industry 
that will bring down the prices and more important thing is once the tax become transparent when the goods are being exported from india to other countries you are now going to compete in the international market without the local taxes therefore exports also will pick up and become because you become competitive in the international market as far as india is concerned with the locally because of the grant of credit across the board you are now going to see over a period of time the uh, cost coming down sale price coming down competition will definitely reduce the prices another important thing i wanted to mention at this point of time that yes there can be situations where the input may attract higher taxes and the finished goods may attract lower taxes it might it is possible this is called inverted taxes in which case the credit available to a person will be much more than the taxes payable on the finished goods so therefore he will always have all the overflow in credit now this gst for the first time they brought in saying that we will give the refund of those excess payment excess amounts which are overflowing in the credit if you are not able to utilize it because of the inverted tax structure which has been created under the under the law so therefore as far as the traders are concerned they don't have to worry as far as the inputs are attracting higher taxes or not um so uh why there was a need to introduce gst through article 246a and not through a concurrent list entry uh i mentioned it in the beginning i'll again explain uh so i am sorry to bother you could we stop the screen sharing so that your uh, view comes full, uh, full on the screen since we are live on the facebook sure oh okay yes oh. no it's perfect uh, i am also able to see well <laughs> yes yes because Perfect. we thought that now we are not going with the ppt so yeah. the harne uh, shivam bansal can you please elaborate little more as why gst was not that is again why was not introduced through amendment in the concurrent list yeah um, as i mentioned if this gst levy was uh introduced by amending the concurrent list that mean center will sign its own legislation union legislation will be there parliament legislation state government also will legislate because they have to go and collect this state gst and central gst and if there is any conflict or dichotomy between these two then the central legislation will prevail this state government did not want they wanted very clearly that the power to be equally divided so therefore in fact that was the delay in the implementation of the gst itself so therefore the state government said we don't want to give a situation where we give away the power of the legislation and levy of the gst to the state governments i surrender and at the same time we we'll get into a situation where the center may legislate in a manner where the state governments cannot do anything more than this so therefore they said we will not go by the amendment of the concurrent list we will go by article 246 that is right so we have uh, sandeep goel he is a lawyer practicing out here uh, he wants I to know, ask i know him very well i know him <laughs> very well. he is a very bright chap sir sandeep just one second sir can i ask you a question sir good evening good evening how are you good very well sir very well it was a good pleasure to listen to you as usual it was uh, <laughs> complete music to me in fact on the subject of the gst uh one question uh, which you have also touched upon uh, article 279a so this is about gst council they make lot of recommendations every day every meeting they make recommendations uh you said those are binding in nature those no, are binding, binding those are not binding on states those are not binding on state this is also what i also feel but you said in case the states are not following it those the virus can be challenged now uh, my question is uh, my question is uh, my question is little uh, different now if the recommendations are binding if the recommendations are binding 
then of course it uh, strikes at the very root of the constitution and basic uh, structure of the constitution about the federal uh, structure of our constitution and in case it is not binding then what is the charm of having gst council and the states can again i mean uh, take a different route from the recommendations which are made so how do we reconcile this aspect very very good questions Sandeep, as usual you <laughs> always you. <laughs> uh, come up with this type of question not only to me also the courts so i have seen your arguments also so that's no, no. Now, Sandeep, okay. i'll put it this way first of all the gst council after deliberations they make following recommendation one two three four whatever these recommendations are not binding on the the same government or state government. Very I make right. it very clear. That's right. However, without the recommendation, there can be no legislation by the center or the state. That's the principle. In other words, if you recommend, I may accept or I may not accept. That's right. However, if I want to legislate on a subject matter, on a GST, mm -hmm. if there is no recommendation of GST council, the legislation is bad. Okay. So to that extent, they are right. See, it is not as though whatever GST Council says they should do. Mm -hmm. But if GST Council did not say anything, can you do on your own? You cannot. Because All right. that's the no, but they, they, because can ignore, because, because, they can ignore because, they can ignore the recommendations. Ah, they can, they can, they can postpone it, they cannot implement they need to implement immediately, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, they can ask the GST Council to reconsider all those things possible. Mm -hmm. But the more important thing, why they put this particular clause is, mm -hmm. you are right. If the GST Council recommended become binding, mm -hmm. then it is merely the executives. They are not the members of the parliament. Yes. To say that is binding, that means the parliament has necessarily bowed down to their GST Council, it is very bad. Mm -hmm. it's, it, That's it, right. it, it will be struck down immediately. Absolutely. So all the state knows. Because they are, they are the, the representative of the people. The people That's speak right. through the parliament. It so nobody, no, no 35, 25 chief ministers or the tax ministers who can say parliament should obey what we say. No, it is never. However, if the GST council is taking a decision, taking into account the majority, nearly 70% majority, both the center and the states are uh, putting their together, etc. This brings in the uniformity, consistency, as far as the GST law administration is concerned. Without that recommendation, if the finance minister wants to do anything in the center or the state government, uh, that is bad. That is why even today, if you look at the very stimulus package in the office, etc., the finance minister is not in a position to give any announcement for the reduction in the GST rates in office. She That's has right. to wait for the GST council recommendation unless they agree on these recommendations and give the recommendation on this, then only the state government or the central government can legislate. So that is the delicacy as far as the, the this collaborative. I, 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 I still believe I still believe there is some kind of gray area over there where the how, how I mean about the power of the state legislatures to deliberate upon all these aspects because they may deviate from them. We have seen that uh, our past experiences the states have been deviating. Something we can have an offline discussion on this. That's right. What will happen? Right. What, what will happen, etc. As far as the state government, suppose one state government does not want to follow. Yes. yes. Or they want to do something different. That's what right. are the powers can be done, etc. That we can discuss the period. All right. All right. And uh, we don't have to uh, have Very a public. Right. We, we shouldn't hold anybody. I know. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, as Sandeep said that it was music. I also believe that uh, a large number of participants, not only here and as well on the Facebook. Uh, their GST is not a forte like Sandhi, but yes, the way you have been presenting it, it is a seamless wonder and uh, it's just like what we say, Saurav Ganguly was uh, a, a, lord, a god on the east side of the, playing while playing cricket on the off side. Same as what we are hearing you on the GST, I feel the, the manner in which you are answering all these questions, it itself shows the volume of knowledge and depth of knowledge. The AK Singh, is GST under a threat in view of uh, deteriorating center-state relationships? And in a sense, will this shift from cooperative to combative uh, federalism shake the foundation of GST? Uh, unless, see, what happens is all these things are put under the constitution now. Now, if any state government wants to get out of it, 
or does not want to participate, etc. Then what will happen? Then you may bring this the GST council functioning into jeopardy. But that is where they say very clearly, 75% working with the present. If the if the state government absent from there, etc., no problem. The remaining people they will vote. If it is not there, if the 75% voting is not taking place, that proposal will not be accepted. As simple as that. The question of any state government becoming competitive and, and not collaborative, I don't foresee a problem like this. And if they do so, then it has been done politically rather than economically. Thank you, sir. P. Ramesh Kutti says imposed by the Kerala state is valid for two years. If the Kerala state intends to continue to collect beyond two years, can GST council impose any sanction or direct the state to discontinue the cess? No, what no, is no, it is? Very simple. If the GST council has allowed this Kerala, Kerala state government to levy the cess for two years, they can levy. If they want to levy beyond that, then there is, without any GST council recommendation, immediately it will lie in the High Court, High Court will pass it. That person will leave it as not the rest. Am I clear? Am I clear, Chief Sir? That is, uh, if, the, if, if the Kerala government continues to levy beyond two years, this says, without the recommendation of the GST council, then any taxpayer can go to the court and say this levy beyond two years is without authorization, without recommendation from the GST Council, therefore bad in law. And therefore the court will strike it down. And therefore the question of levying the taxes beyond the two years does not arise. Yes, uh, R. R. Lomte, charging of GST under reverse, a reverse charge mechanism is necessary under this uh, act. Is it creating complexity in the act or not? Very interesting question. Very interesting question. Uh, let us now analyze why the concept of reverse charge is being bought. Let us analyze that. A little, we'll step back and ask this question. This goes back to the question of the convenience of collection. At any tax which is being collected or the power given to the, the government, first of all, question is. Whether the act, the event has taken place, supply has taken place or not. If supply has taken place, the levy has arisen. Then normally the person providing the supply, the goods or services must be taxed. It can happen that the receiver of the supplier, supply, number can be less, less. Provider of services very high, number is high. In which case, the government. Why should they go after several people to collect the taxes from them? They can as well collect a limited number of people from whom the taxes can be collected. Or they are already in the tax net. For example, you take the case of lawyers. Lawyers, when they are rendering a service to a client, they are not required to pay any tax. The clients will pay the tax, so long as they are in the tax bracket, etc. Et Why they are already in the number of lawyers in the country, the population is more than a million. So therefore, why should we tax all these people uh, and then go after them, ask them, is a, the, the cost of collection can be more than the collection itself. So therefore, many times, the government decides that instead of collecting the tax from the supplier, we shall collect it from the end user. And this has happened in the past also. It's not as though for the first time it is happening. It's a, in fact, Apple, you have the old rubber cess, the rubber, the latex rubber which is being produced in the rubber plantations. There is a cess to be levied, but that is not levied and paid by the plantation workers or plantation owners. It is collected from the end users, namely the tire manufacturer, the belt manufacturers. So, therefore, this was questioned before the Supreme Court in the Jalandhar rubber case. The Supreme Court answered the question very clearly. So long as there is a taxable event, a levy is leviable. If the, if, the, if the government wants to collect the tax from a different source than from a person who actually originated the goods or sell the goods, etc., it is perfectly valid. So, therefore, there is no question of 
reverse charge being bad in law? No, these have been questioned and then I already answered a long time back. Next question. Sir, uh, what is the difference between a cess and a surcharge in a fiscal statute under Article 271? A cess is for a particular purpose to be used only for this particular purpose. For example, you can education says, automobile says, automobile says is collected for the purpose of promoting R&D in our automobile. You can't use it for anything else. A surcharge which is charged over and above the existing levy can be collected by the government and can be used for any other purpose. It is not necessarily contain one particular purpose. That is the difference between these two. Shivam Bansal, is it possible for a state to have a different definition of supply since states have their own GST law? Uh, states have a different, uh, the, uh, the, the, their own legis uh, legislation called the state legislation. However, they cannot have a different definition of supply because the GST council has said supply definition is this. So, if you are going to go for definition of supply other than what is going by GST Council, it is bad in law. Again, they will be struck down. Therefore, the state government are obliged to define supply in the particular manner, in the same manner where the GST Council has said, where the center and the states are all following the same way. So, uh, 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 Manendra Nath Verma, can we challenge the recent retrospective amendment in the uh, in respect of transitional credit under GST by taking the ground of principles of estoppel. What is your take on it? Uh, I would not like to answer this question because we are actually handling some matters and it is controversial and uh, it is possible to take a position that uh, uh, we are entitled to the transition of credit. It's perfect. Sir. Uh, Haresh Nanji, whether recommendations of the GST Council can be introduced as a money bill in the parliament? No, recommendations are made. It has to be implemented in the form of a, a, a legislation. If the legislation falls under the category of money bill, it can come. If it is merely a non money aspect, that will not come into money bill. Therefore, the recommendation per se will not get into the bill. It has to be converted to a bill to be introduced in the parliament. Uh, so, though it's a question not directly with the GST, but as a common student of law or a young professional who is not dealing in tax, etc., could you just slightly substantiate on money bill? Because this money bill part does come uh, quite often in the newspapers and the channels. Our number of people would be interested. Let's assume who's watching on the Facebook. He might not be primarily into the taxation part, but he should be able to understand what would be the money bill, etc. And what are the subtle differences as such? Yeah, so a very good, good question. See, money bill has a special status under the constitution. It deals not only the the tax, any fiscal policies of the government is woven in the form of a finance bill, other way, money bill. A finance bill, for example, is a money bill. It's an example, basically, because that is where the finance minister with a speech and also introduce various amendments to the various laws, etc., etc., comes a money bill. The, the purpose of money bill is Lok Sabha, when it passes the money bill, when it goes to Rajya Sabha, Rajya Sabha, even if it does not approve, it can return. If the Lok Sabha again says what we are saying is right, then notwithstanding non-approval of Rajya Sabha, the money bill will be still passed and the president can sign it. So therefore, the sensitivity always says that the Rajya Sabha will say these, these actions should not be done through money bill route. But it can happen in a money bill, both money as also non-money can also be introduced and still can as, finance, as the money bill. But that is a separate controversy going on in the court. In fact, uh, some of the legislation made by the government through the money bill be also questioned. Some comments have been made by the Supreme Court judges also on this point. So, uh, advocate, no, again, that issue comes. Some people are as, as complex as uh, GST. Advocate CMRP asks the provisions of GST Act in respect of arrest 
seems to be against the CRPC provisions. What is your take on it? Uh, I would say the power of arrest which has been given under the GST law is taken from the Customs Act as also the as well Excise Act. The tax evasion is considered as an offence in the state and therefore prosecution can be launched. In situations situation where the tax evasion is improved and the incremented documents have been taken and the statements are properly recorded and if the assessing officer, the tax officer feels that if the person is not arrested, it can further tamper the evidences, he may take the extreme step of arresting. But if you arrest the person with the 24 hours, he has to put it before the magistrate. That is exactly like the CRPC only. Instead of here, the power is given to the tax officer than a police officer. And there is another judgment of the Supreme Court saying the tax officer is not equal to police officer. Therefore, the evidence recorded by them is still admissible evidence is under court. So I would say that this has been there in provision. Power of arrest has been questioned in one or two cases. In fact, the make my trip case was one case that has been decided uh, by the Delhi High Court. Under what circumstances they can arrest, what they cannot arrest, there have been guidelines been given already. Uh, so we have Rajiv Malhotra, he's again a practicing lawyer out here. Uh, though again, I would request everyone, though I knew him personally, therefore it's always join the chat box or otherwise through the name itself. Uh, Rajiv, I have unmuted you. You can ask the question directly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, this is regarding one question is regarding penalty and the recovery. Let's say I'm the offender. I have done some kind of fake billing, which caused uh, the state exchequer to lose out on the GST part. Thereafter, the persons, those to those whom I billed, they were uh, approached by the GST people and they have recovered the amount from those persons. Uh, to those who I'm, uh, I have built the fake bills. Now, whether the recovery lies to me as well and the penalty? I have told you in the beginning that these questions are not is out of syllabus, rather. Right, sir. Anyway. No, no, no. Uh, uh, no, no. no, no. no, no. If I simply say out sir. of syllabus, you may go with the impression that I have no answer. No, no, no. Now that you have asked this question, therefore I will answer this question. So I will just clarify. Uh, I am sorry to, though uh, we are taking this question, but otherwise we will not take any other question beyond the slaves. Uh, right, sir. <laughs> I sir. just thought that I, uh, while, while I am doing moderating, I should also moderate the entire show that it doesn't go the way that uh, people start asking, then they say, Rajiv has been allowed, other people are not being allowed to ask the questions out of slaves. Or I can answer the question offline, Rajiv. Is it okay? So that we Fine, get sir. all Thank the. You so much, sir. Second question. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Second question, sir. Sir, sir. Fine, sir. Thank you so very much, sir. Sir, second question. Uh, how do we divide the tax between the state and the center? And what is the jurisdiction of recovering the tax? Who supersedes whom? The state GST supersedes the center GST for the recovery, uh, you know, the module. The, the modality or the central GST supersedes the state GST for the recovery modules? Oh, wonderful question. Uh, what has happened is, Thanks, Thank you, sir. Uh, fortunately, the assessees who are to sir. pay the taxes, central GST and state GST, sir. they are not subjected by both the offices simultaneously. The, the jurisdiction of yes, dealing sir. with a vertical assessee is given either to the center or by the state, state government. So therefore, one SSC being pulled by both officers does not arise. So this has been done administratively. Who are all the SSCs will be dealt with by the center. Who are all the SSCs will be dealt with the state government. Once you decide that, then it is the fate, unfortunate fate or good fate of the SSC, whether he falls in the center or at the state. The state government then will have go after them and collect the full taxes, both central and the state government. And sir. thereafter, the money will be distributed accordingly. Therefore, the question of one being superior to other does not arise. Fine, sir. And how does it get decided that the assessee falls 
under the ambit of the state gst or the central gst that i already been announced to everybody the people know that right uh, and second uh, last question sir uh, last question, let's, sir. let's ask uh, let's allow other person also sir, one one last question sir it is very relevant again sir no no everybody feels uh, sir how do how, any, how do you feel sir we travel on tv ramana ready only I last know. question sir how do you how do you how do you feel that gst will proceed ahead of pv ramana ready sir pv pv ramana ready the the supreme court telangana high court judgment which was uh, upheld by by the honorable supreme court sir in which section 69 section 70 and section uh, 43 a section 41a of the crpc and 154 of crpc because there is no fir registration for the rest of the person and then the bail uh, it's it's a judicial custody it is not police custody all those issues were there pv ramana ready can we challenge the ultra ultra virus because pv ramana ready uh, interpreted the law and the step ahead of pv ramana ready is to interpret to 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 challenge the ultra virus of the pv of pv ramana ready is it uh, feasible sir it is possible it, is it maintainable the uh, the according to me sir you are asking a question you are binding me because if i answer anyway i can't argue otherwise in the court i think <laughs> let me not ask this question <laughs> sir thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you so very much Uh, thank, so you, sir, thank, just, you, because, thank you sir thank you vikas sir thank you vikas sir no issues said so it's just like uh, uh, saying that you are struck between the devil and the deep sea which side <laughs> <laughs> sir sir thank you so uh, much uh, tejas whether the levy of gst on supply can be constitutionally valid when place of supply which is subject matter of taxation happens outside india see it is a matter of interpretation right you don't question the challenge because under what circumstances the item will be considered as import of goods or export of goods or export of services import of services this is determined by the rules you may feel that it is export if the legislation says since the place of supply is in india for example intermediary services for example if they say so you may not be happy but it can't question constitutional validity hello yes so uh sebashi during the pandemic every state is complaining that the gst due to uh, due since january 2020 has not been disbursed by central government can it be challenged by any state government before the court of law what is your take on that oh, there is a constitutional guarantee if the center does not fulfill the guarantee the state government can go to the court and then ask them to make it nothing wrong but i don't think central will allow it to happen like this they will definitely sit down the provision no uh rajiv you can uh, mute yourself oh sorry sir i'll i'll do that but uh yeah can restricting the sneha can restricting input credit to the extent of 10% of mismatched credit be considered good in the eyes of law or not i can't be not good uh i i said not good okay right sir thank you one vishal agarwal though it's a separate issue he says he wants to work under you what is the way to uh, join your office how to apply at sector aha uh-huh. very interesting question uh my entry into the office is easy and difficult sir uh difficult uh, because you have to go through the three tier process of selection but if you get into that after that you will enjoy the life because it is uh, a place where you learn we we actually you follow the principle of earning while learning and that is the principle which we follow but uh, to get into this is uh, as a difficult process you go through the uh, internment uh, in, uh, internship programs and then selection processes and various I mean our uh, our partners have devised of course and i am also responsible for uh, the selection of the candidates is be taken very very seriously because for me if a person join i may not know him at all in my life a young student from the law school etc when he applies and then when the char uh, gives them the go ahead and then if he joins from that day 
because my problem starts. My problem is I have fiduciary responsibility to ensure that this lawyer becomes outstanding lawyer. So therefore, all I do in the entire thing is how to make it happen. The mentorship will be pushing under whom? What is his special uh, aptitude? Which one will you like it? Whether you want litigation or a consulting, which, which subject you will like it? And what more subjects we can actually add? And uh, how he reacts with the, his colleagues? So many things we constantly work on, etc. The amount of time I want them to spend on reading, reading, reading is enormous. And of course, correcting the drafts and various things, etc. Participating in meetings along with me with the clients, taking them to the courtroom when I argue the case, I ask them to prepare like this. We don't ask them to come to merely as a visitor, but we ask them to come and to participate. And therefore, the every day the learning is tremendous and uh, the type of briefs which we get the quality of the brief and the quality of the mentorship will definitely make the person really really a remarkable lawyer that's what that's what my aim is i am trying my level best to make each one of my lawyer an outstanding lawyer nothing more than that. Uh, sir i am thankful to vishal that he has taken us to a different platform Invariably, we take uh, last 10 15 minutes and we are running short of time. It's upon you. People are just fascinated. We uh, invariably complete the session at 7 30. We can go ahead, but we will not take any questions. Rather, we would like to know how this mentorship at Secret is done so that people across the board, not only on the, uh, in the webinar itself or on the Facebook, how do you believe, like one person has asked, as a young consultant, how can one improve my uh, skills of giving written opinion? He may not be under the veteran, uh, mentorship of the uh, LNS. So how he should do, how he should read, how, what is your take? Let's take those 10 minutes for uh, sharpening our skills on that aspect. Uh, come again, the question coming. Sir, the question is, how can one improve the skills of giving written opinion once the, one he does not have a mentorship like, let's assume, LNS? Because the legal opinion in black and white is something else. Oral opinions can always do. No, even oral opinion also is as important and as firm as the legal written opinion, sir. There is no difference. I, as far as I am concerned, I don't take the oral opinion lightly. I take that same seriousness. I only one question to all of you, sir. Sir, could we, you, uh, I'm sorry to bother you. Could you just push backwards because while we go in the Facebook, your face is being cut. Right. We, uh, it's perfect now. Yes, sir. I, yes. Must, I must tell you today. Today, our firm may be about 400 lawyers. But there was a time in the year 1985 when I started, I was alone. I was having the clients. I was not having any mentor. I was doing myself. So therefore, it is not impossible for individual lawyers to excel. But what is important is hard work. And never take chance and always ensure what more I can do to this client. Whether I am giving opinion which is convenient to him or correct. Ever, if you ever get into a situation where the client wants his opinion, therefore I give it, etc. It down the hill. It is raised to the bottom. Never fall into that. Never fall into that. Always ensure that you give the correct opinion, not convenient opinion. But Amount of time you have to spend in doing research, unlimited. Regardless of the fee the client will pay. If that fee paid is going to be a factor for you to research in giving the response, I will not rate you as a good lawyer. That is one aspect, the fee. After that, the fee portion should never enter your mind while researching on a particular matter. And this way, if you can maintain highest ethical standards, Never fall for any shortcuts. Remember, even today, the shortest distance in two points is still a straight line. All crooked lines may look attractive, but they are not shortest. And the easiest thing to do in life is to defend the truth. If we can maintain these standards, because you have long-term vision, you can never fail, sir. Of course, you may have to work about 18 hours a day minimum. There are days I work for 48 hours, 72 hours, non-stop. 
and I never complained to anybody. I enjoyed it. That's the joy of doing something phenomenal. And therefore, I do not see because a person does not have a mentor and therefore he will give his quality brief or opinion will be lower or no, not necessary at all. You are the best teacher yourself. All other mentorship, etc., is additional to that. But you are made yourself that is what the God has made you. Uh, sir, another, now the question back on the chat box has changed. Sir, can you share your daily uh, schedule to enable us to have an enriching experience? I just say that uh, they are taking a cue from Mahabharat. One may have direct guru like Arjun and another may have a guru like Aklavya. So, so today we, we are fortunate enough that we have a guru in the shape of a virtual platform where we can have the insights from that. Uh, I will give my, it's not a secret. What I do is not a secret. But how many of you will be able to do, I do not know. I get up in the morning around 3.30 or 4 or even earlier. And I finish my seeing the early mails, mails and messages, what instruction I have to give, etc. I do it in about 45 minutes. Around 4.45 or so, I am in the park. I run for about an hour and a half. Nowadays, I am not able to run because of the restrictions and the lockdown, etc. And I come back and take shower and then do my pujas till around 7.45, 8 o'clock. And 8 o'clock I'm in the office. I do not know when will you go back. Maybe 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Normally I go to bed around 12 o'clock. But before that, I ensure that I read at least 10 judgments in the subject. And uh, before I go to bed, I ask a question. Am I a better lawyer today than yesterday? Did I learn something new? Did I mentor something? Did I argue some difficult cases? Did I give an opinion which is very difficult to the client? If I get that answer, yes, I sleep well for three hours. That's also. Uh, so, uh, the, yes, it looks uh, quite challenging. But they, they, also, they all say that easy paths never make you reach to a good destination. Good destinations are always challenging and they have to be accepted with uh, passion. Uh, and this thing. So, uh, another that, like you said, that you read 10 judgments. It's my personal take. Nowadays, some judgments are all itself running into 300, 400, 700 pages. So, how do we cope up with those 10 judgments along with the case law which you have to prepare as well as the case law? What is your take? Yeah, if the number of pages are more, if you read in two days, you keep in a, keep in a mind that when I say 10 judgments, it is an average size of 30, 30 pages. If it is 500 pages, etc., obviously you will do it in two days' time. Or on a Sunday, you sit down and read it completely, take notes, etc. So uh, you don't have to worry that uh, I must read the five, 10 judgments of 500 pages, etc. No, I am not saying. Now I understand once we want, uh, one who works or uh, has the is works under the ages like like you. Then why the word impossible becomes I am possible. So I can uh, with vouch say that uh, LNS people when they work they turn impossible into I am possible. So uh, Vinay Kumar Jain says three things what a good practitioner should learn and what are the three tools according to you which make him a better lawyer and what should he do to do that? So why why pull you three? There can be three hundred things, no? Why only three? To make him a good lawyer. Probably he's taking cue from that when uh, it was given the power that you can take three steps. So, Dharti, Pratal and uh, onwards. Yes, sir. No, I mean, I would say never put a restriction on your mind for thinking. Keep your antenna up always. Ideas come at any point of time. Second, you can train your mind to do two things simultaneously. It's possible so that it will include productivity. I'm talking about my personal experience. Third, purity of thought and clarity of mind is an important, important aspect in lawyering. And it is very easy to say, but very difficult to practice. At any point of time, that should be the yardstick for you 
not to falter from their states. And last but not least is that the joy is in giving and sharing. The joy is not in accumulating. When I say sharing, it is not merely the wealth or the money, it is the sharing of your time, sharing of experience, sharing of your joy, and sharing of your sorrows. All those things you need to spend time with the juniors to make them really outstanding. And this joy, it will never end. There is no measure to this joy. Sir, uh, what you said that all things which look easy, uh, the, it's always difficult to follow. As I read in one of the books, it said that uh, probably somebody's mic is on. Kindly, could you mute yourself? Uh, so, as I read somewhere, it was said that if to do was as easy as to say, then poor would have lived in palaces and horses would have flown. So, uh, Ji Balaji, how to blend law, language and facts to become a good lawyer? And what one has to do constantly? Focus to improve his knowledge and other acumen. Honest? Pardon? What one has to constantly focus to improve all these things? Blend of law, language and facts. Because we all know that the lawyer is a combination of knowledge of law, placing of facts in the proper listening. And as a lawyer also, I felt that opening statement before the court uh, is very paramount. You may uh, finish or uh, make good or perish your case only because of the opening statement. Before the court. No, you are absolutely right. I think, uh, what Balaji is it, or name, the person who has asked the question. Yeah, In, who had asked the question is asking the right question. You see, the first statement you are going to make about a matter before a court must come out in a manner is simple, straightforward, and to the point. It can happen only when you have complete mastery of the brief, facts, and the law. Then only you can simplify in simple terms, say that this is the point. If you are not clear, I am telling you, you will never be able to make a simple statement which is directly to them. So I agree with you that you must assimilate all the facts, you must know the law point of it, you must know what exactly you are going to say and say, yes, in this particular thing, the short question for consideration, my lord, is this, this, this. And many times I have told the judges, sir, please don't open your file. Just listen to me for five minutes and then we can tell you the relevant pages. There are situations there. I have reduced 1000, 1500 pages brief into a single page, a diagram, a line diagram, and say, use only this. It contains all what is contained in the paper. Let us now discuss this. It has worked. But simply, I am telling you today if you are asked to write an essay, for 30 pages, it is easy. If I ask you to write an essay for one page, you will struggle. Why? Because putting all the ideas into one short paragraph is not easy. And that can come only when you have complete mastery of the facts and the law. It's uh, <coughs> a uh, point well taken. According to you, for a good lawyer, he should have three things. Concise, incise and precise. That is uh, what I could gather from you. Sir, I cannot say better than you. <laughs> no, no, not, not at all, sir. We are all learning from you. I am more fascinating and I am feeling that rather we should have one talk, how to become a good lawyer, how to do mentorship. One question like one, one, one has been posted on the chat box. It says that you said that you didn't have the mentor and then you still <clears throat> grew better and then you ultimately groomed many people. 400 people taking in one shot and that through a three trial system. It's not one shot over a period of time, not one shot huh? over a period of time. Uh, 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 sir, that is why itself Rome was not built in a day. It took years and years. You can, it takes years to make anything, but it takes uh, moments to destroy. Coronavirus is an, is an example of that. So, so how, he says, how can one learn the mentorship, etc.? How, how to develop a mentor and how to develop the uh, patronage that somebody can take actually few 
how to improve himself how to sharpen the tools simple sir you make one uh, decision that this junior coming before me i must make him better than me problem solved problem solved i want you to remember i don't know whether you uh, many of you would have heard the conversation with uh, uh, dronacharya and uh, duryodhan after uh, bhishma fell for the better yes. of and uh, dronacharya was in his chamber and dronacharya and duryodhan asked him sir you are happy today is it because you became commander in chief and he replied sir you will never understand me tomorrow i am going to fight arjun i am going to use all my weapons to destroy him defeat him but he is going to defeat me in the battle field tomorrow because he is a better warrior than me he is going to vanquish me tomorrow and i am going to tell the whole world i have produced a student who is better than me you follow this sir your student or your junior can never be your competitor even if he comes you should applaud why should you worry about it so therefore the mentorship everything is only to ensure that you give everything to him regardless of the fact that he going to be with you or not you want to go start practice also no problem best blessing nothing to worry about as far as you are concerned your job is to training give him all the support so long as it is never pull back it doesn't make any sense uh so point well taken it is i am reminded why that uh, there's a famous doha which says guru gobind tau khade kaake lagu pae bali hari guru aapki guru gobind ji batae that once you are faced with the guru and the god that one should always first give respect to the guru because guru has shown the light towards the god the point well taken now only last question sir uh, again on the profession of law what uh, like you said that a thousand page you make it in a concise in a one page just that bullet point that main guru mantra how to do about that there is no way of doing it so teaching you sir over way you have to practice it practice 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 today i am telling you when i dictate a note when it comes to me from my secretary i ask a question could anybody else would have done this draft better if they get an answer yes probably yes i tear this i redo it so therefore the the more attention you give to the facts and the law over a period of time you will settle down you will be able to precisely state what the exactly issue in a one page or even less than that but still that bullet points how to make that bullet points bullet actually to work what is the key to that practice i understand again back to mahabharat i have reminded that somebody asked abhim that how can you eat the food in the dark he said uh, to his brothers abhyas 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 that is practice practice and practice but still what what could be the key for that and i have no other way because you you self learning there is no other way and uh, even a junior comes with a bigger reads where it is wrong etc or it is too elaborate you tell him no this is not the way do it like this do it like this it comes uh sir so the the way we are just sailing through we do not know uh, how a time is flowing i'm just reminded a time and tide wait for none but once it is in a good company you always enjoy that company so uh, uh, another question because i also have an associates in my office how do you ultimately try to instill that confidence how to, how do you help them to read better because everybody is now in a shortcut uh, wants to have a shortcut short circuit a shortcut towards the success without actually going through the rigors and rigor modes of the tough times there such people who have no place in my office no shortcuts in our office no out 
it has to be a sustained work and there is no way a person can achieve success by some other groups or by hook or group no the only way is a long route the only way is to work hard the only way is to get correct so therefore i have no mantra to give to those people who want to have a shortcut to success i don't know sir i just don't know so therefore you asking a wrong person this question uh okay uh, sir another question we have done lot lot upon that that how to how the lawyer should do how this mentorship etc should be done as a guru or somebody who is running his own office or a firm how do you how does what is your take on that how should he further uh, the art of delegation of uh, and disseminating knowledge to them should be taught see the message has to go down the office it is not enough if you are a mentor and the others are not every partner in the office must be told very clearly that when a junior asks a question you are supposed to answer forget the junior even an intern when you are working in our office learning something at the time they come and ask a question to a partner unless he is arguing a matter or the very familiar etc he should leave the work clarify to the person give the answer and then so this message has to go that knowledge is not the monopoly of anybody it is meant for dissemination once that is clear then your it lies right 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 completely in the entire office here you don't have to worry about it. uh so it is just like what they say each one plant one so as you grow these saplings the seeds become plants and plants become tree according to you yes uh so that uh, it, it has been a wonderful session uh, it's just like i just wish uh, if the time was with us that we could continue getting these insights but now we can only make a request that uh, tax it was always looking taxing on the face of it but once you have a person like you coming on the platform or anywhere else uh, it is seamlessly uh, very good to learn they say there are only three processes I, on this webinar i have always saying first there has to be a yearning for learning and then only there can be earning uh, so i will ask sapan dheer who has been closely working with the beyond loss team he will propose a vote of thanks but on any convenient day how to do about the law tools of advocacy or any other topic you just like not on tax tax of course it's always enjoyable once it comes from a person like you it is just to say when you are you see a good person he can essay any role or a good lawyer can just uh, seamlessly come into any uh, effort and it is a seamless effort because yes. i want you to know one thing uh, you know what is tapas i don't know there is what is english translation for tapas i don't think you can have any particular word for tapas the tapas we does the tapas with the hope one day he will have the darshan of the god that is his ultimate wish and he does it he does it years of tapas in the heart of what he knows it may not happen it may it may happen may not happen he is aware he is aware yet he does it over a period of time he start enjoying doing the tapas the journey itself is so interesting if the destination happens we are good nothing like it if it is not happening doesn't matter i enjoyed the journey so i do the same thing sir i don't expect anything yet what is going to happen but every day morning i am at the tapas we sitting in the office working 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 there is no saturday there is no sunday there is no holiday etc for me i enjoy the work every day Uh, point well taken. They say for any hardworking lawyer, a post like you, uh, there's every day is a Sunday because we uh, every day we have a sun on the day, so it is a Sunday for everybody. But the question is, Sunday is not for a leisure day. It has to be uh, studied. One has to be just like a newspaper cha uh, news channel, 24 by 7. According to you, one has to continuously read. So, uh, Mr. P. S. Anand says that after three years of practice, he was feeling that. Uh, he is not in the right career but after hearing you 
he feels that he has been given some certain insights i i will add one more thing it is for large number of participants who are doing that it is just like they were undergoing especially during these dark times we have shown them that that little window that little candle which actually helps them to sail through i i one thing to say yes sir tax laws are not simple whether direct tax or indirect tax it is very complicated highly contested several amendments judgments overruled we take judgment 1922 1919 etc plus you must know the accounts you must know the technology you must know the business it is very very difficult the entry barrier is very very high i accept i can see but that cannot be the reason for lawyers not getting into this because the the demand is so much please i beg you work hard devote one year two year as sabbatical get over this this entry barrier they are after using what the fun is so that is why they say one is lonely on the top and i can gauge why why lns is lonely on the top but uh, lonely on the top you get the best views say once you go to the uh, mount everest the view from the mount everest is entirely different than what you see on the uh, basic this thing otherwise if the view on the top would not have been good people wouldn't have gone to the hill station to enjoy the sights i so must tell you top, i am i must tell you one thing i have yes. not gone to everest but i have been to north pole and south pole uh, uh, and uh, i enjoyed enjoyed the the nature it is best so therefore uh, I mean, those are the places where people don't go at all but this what place visiting visiting and you get time to yourself and then you can ask the question part of nature what exactly it is so i am not scaled everest i wanted to i am always zero sea level only uh, so uh, that that is a comparison that once you compare that if you are somebody on the extreme top that uh, i was just reading an article today that the gut feeling and the guts one has to do it is said that when uh, one has to go to the moon at that point of time the edwin c edwin c aldrin had been trained that he he had to jump and he had to become the first man but he had certain fears looming in his mind and at that point of time neil armstrong just jumped in and he created history so i was just reading that sometimes in life you just get a fraction of a second and then then that is the key of success what is your take on that i agree with you uh, so thank you the question and answer session would not would continue i am just feeling as if it is you said that for 18 hours you could study uh, so thank you sir and we would like that you should come on a platform on us where we can have the insights as a lawyer as a team how one has to grow because eventually as you said uh, sharing is caring and especially during the pandemic and the dark days if we start disseminating knowledge and this is the entire platform frankly before uh, lockdown we never thought that under we would create something like beyond law and we were talking something with law and beyond law let's assume now we are talking beyond law we have sapandhir and sapandhir will propose a vote of thanks and thank you sir it was a wonderful session just before we part i would like your son to come because he has been a uh, 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 acting and a facilitating uh, all this uh, program yeah, because yeah, i have yeah, always yeah. seen that whenever we are Pardon, he has stepped out now sir he has just stepped out uh, so he has just acted like the elderly uh, he could have been made as neil armstrong but just can we uh, thank you to him and thank you to the entire lss team who have made, made us learn matter things over to you sapan sapan just propose a vote of thanks vote of thanks will a 2 minute vote of thanks here does not show that it has actually there the that ring uh, within the mind will continue for a wonderful session which we had thank you sir over to you sapan thank you thank you vikas ji thank you sir and uh, for wonderful session we have learned a lot from you and uh, i think that lot of learn learning processes just left also we want you to come here again again and again so that we can learn so much from you and uh, i just read about you sir that uh, your uh, this uh, from you are done is that uh, it's a vast experience of professional 
specializing in corporate sector and commercial laws and all that bank arbitration banking law commercial litigations competition corporate custom taxes and i think that nothing has been left from you sir that you have uh, continued in your profession and i have uh, uh, gone through your other articles also that it's a lot of learn from you simultaneously today also on this webinar one uh, has enriched his or her knowledge from you uh, on this wonderful session thank you sir thank you and we wish you to come again on some other issue and uh, uh, i on behalf of team beyond law mr vikas chatra ji ratan ji uils we all thank to you uh, for wonderful uh, experience shared by you sir thank you sir thank you very thank much you. Thank just last word uh, uh, only one last word somebody has written that you deliver lectures in sanskrit one last quotation in sanskrit before we part he has written that you deliver uh, you deliver lectures in sanskrit in balaji mandir so just given insight of a sanskrit shloka which can just uh, be the dose for the entire day to be cherished okay shraddhaya deyam अश्रद्धया देय श्रिया देय प्रिया देय प्रिया देय संता देय कथयति ते कर्म विधिगिवृत्ति great sir thank you the so only explanation to that because majority of them uh, for them put it uh, those sanskrit is uh, related to our sanskriti but sometimes one feels that this is a, just a this explanation is a, and then we wrap it this is a portion from taitri upanishad it is giving the joy of sharing joy of giving thank you sir and tomorrow we have again one of your partners mr r parthar sarthi principal partner in your firm who will speak on free and fair international trade under wto tomorrow do connect with us on this webinar we start tomorrow at 5 rather than 6 and sir we are thankful i must tell you you know the brilliant lawyer brilliant lawyer and on the subject is going to talk is the real master there is nobody to beat him or compare anywhere near him in this subject in india with that that level and uh, uh, i asked him to talk i think he will go to enthrall you not i what i talked sir so, uh, uh thank you it is just like we have seen today's uh, virat kohli playing tomorrow we will have rohit sharma both are treat to be heard and watched thank you everyone stay connected stay blessed at home and stay healthy and st uh, now start reading also uh, let's take the cue what he, what the plant what the seedlings have been seeded in the minds thank you sir we will all try to come to the expectations on your side thank you everyone thank you